By now, you've seen the footage. Nearly 3,000 tons of ammonium nitrate stored in a Beirut warehouse ignited. This was the result. It's not the first time this chemical compound used in fertilizers and mining projects has devastated a city. In 2015, a series of chemical explosions rocked the Chinese port city of Tianjin, leaving 173 people dead. In 1995, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols used it in the bombing of an Oklahoma City federal building. And back in 1947, a ship in Galveston Bay, Texas, carrying more than 2,000 tons of ammonium nitrate ignited, leaving more than 500 dead. The blast was so ferocious, residents feared it was an atomic bomb. Now, I'm talking about Lebanon and why the timing of this devastating explosion could not have been worse. Even before the blast, mass demonstrations across the country protesting government corruption, a banking crisis, runaway inflation, soaring poverty, and a refugee crisis. In March, as a global pandemic gained momentum as if they needed any other problems, Lebanon was drowning in debt. Its credit rating sinking, its economy teetered on the brink of collapse as the World Bank forecast 45% of the country's population would sink below the poverty line. All of that was before a fireball and supersonic shockwave ripped through the capital city, destroying major grain silos and the nation's largest port facility, which handles an estimated 60% of Lebanon's imports. Lebanon purchases nearly all of its wheat from abroad and fears of food scarcity are now growing. Meanwhile, the hospital staff, already stretched by coronavirus, now have to deal with many of the over 5,000 people injured by the blast. Another quarter million Lebanese have been made homeless. Thousands have taken to the streets in protest of a government in whom they have lost confidence. And they're already seeing results just this week. Lebanon's prime minister and his cabinet resigned. A formal investigation is underway, and though it's too early to point fingers, at least officially, it's unclear why that much explosive material was left in a warehouse near downtown Beirut for six years. What is clear is that this incident has placed immense pressure on a country that was just barely holding on. And it's laid bare the political dysfunction that has paralyzed Lebanon in recent years.